for I think seven, six or seven years and we are the largest importers of glass mosaic in Europe, believe it or not. So we built, I don't know, we, I really, to be honest, I stopped counting, you know, a few years back uh, on how many projects, full projects we work. We work uh, private projects, uh, aqua parks, hotels, everything, you know, we cover whole territory of Croatia. I need to say without good installers, that wouldn't be possible. You know? Welcome to Up Your Tile Game podcast. We're so glad to have you. Uh, I'm really happy to be part of the podcast. This is first time I'm doing stuff like this, to be honest. I don't have problems awesome. with uh, with talking, especially with professionals. You know, I like to exchange my ideas, uh, my knowledge that I collected through years. I'm not that old. I'm 40 years old, but let's say for the last 20 years, I'm in tiling and everything that goes with ties, adhesives, waterproofing, etc., etc. Wonderful. Well, I can't wait to hear more about it. But first of all, do tell me the 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 the, the right um, pronunciation of your first and last name. Uh, Zoran is my first name, and Milos is the second one, the surname. Nice. And yeah. tell us where where are you right now? I love your background, by the way. I love how you've got your your tiled background. That looks great. This is, uh, to be honest, my idea, you know, because uh, as you can see, uh, we are much involved in pool, pool industry. So we, we built quite few pools, let's say in Croatia. We are tourist country, so it's normal to have uh, every house practically has a pool. So we live from tourism. And uh, mm -hmm. mosaic is specific because, uh, you know, you have exhibitors for tiles different sizes and this is something we built, it is custom made. I had an idea, so it's all handcrafted, you know, the wood, uh, the electricity, everything, you know, we, we call That's it wonderful. mosaic wall. Yeah. I love it. So Thank you. You're, what part of Croatia are you in, Zoran? Uh, I'm in second biggest uh, city in Croatia called Split. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not a big city, you know. Uh, I think the population of uh, in my area is like around three hundred thousand people. You know, Croatia is a small country, you know, mm -hmm. little less than three million people. But we build a lot of pools, a lot of pools, definitely. In center of, of Mediterranean, let's say, you know, our first neighbors ah. are, are our friend from Italy, so. You know, we have a lot a really nice coastline, a lot of beautiful houses near the coast, uh, a lot of pools, and that's good for business. I cannot say anything different. <laughs> you know, so. I see that in your photos on Instagram, so I made me wonder, you know. I, you know, when we speak about uh, mosaics and even my company that I work with, uh, Vidrapur, this time I, would, I need to say a few words about it. We work with them for I think seven, six or seven years. And we are the largest importers of glass mosaic in Europe, believe it or not. So we built, I don't know, we, I really, to be honest, I stopped counting, you know, a few years back uh, on how many <laughs> projects, full projects we work. We work uh, private projects, uh, aqua parks, hotels, everything, you know, we cover whole territory of Croatia. So we have a- Wow. Uh, let's say beautiful project, but uh, I need to say without good installers, that wouldn't be possible, you know. And this time I would like to thank every uh, client of mine who helped me to achieve what what and to reach these heights uh, where we are now, definitely. That's amazing. And tell, tell us the name of the company and a little bit about how the company got started. Uh, honestly, my let's say my beginnings were selling building products, and uh, I started doing it maybe 20 years ago. You know, selling adhesives, everything, waterproofing materials, uh, systems for rehabilitation of uh, uh, old buildings, masonry, etc., etc. So we started this thing like six, seven years ago. I was mainly selling, you know products for installers and one installer we were, we were on one lunch and told me listen you are selling building materials why won't you start selling everything 
for pools, glass mosaic, and that's how this story started. You know, I remember my first time going to Spain to the factory, Vidrapur, and asking them to send me an offer for glass mosaic, and I asked them, listen, I would like to load full trucks, and you know, first they will start kidding, you know, who is buying, you know, uh, stocking a large <laughs> amount of glass mosaic. I told them, listen, uh, I think. Uh, the market is growing and we need to offer them a good material. Basically, what is the story with, with mosaic? Uh, in Croatia, we have situation in the past. Normally, uh, Chinese mosaic was sold. Uh, it's a completely different type of mosaic because it's not recycled glass. Uh, it has, mm. you know, corners, edges. It's on a, on a mesh. And what happens? Through the one or two years, it started falling off. Uh, Spanish factories are, I will show you example, for instance, like this. You know, it's a completely different story. You see it like this? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's created from 100% uh, recycled glass, not beer bottles. It's from broken glass from, I don't know, windows and doors. So they have, uh, they patented in product with, called silicon dots. That's really important because silicon is inert. When you use polymer adhesive, it won't fall off. For instance, ah. what is problem with Chinese mosaic, even with some mosaic from Italian, I don't want to say the name. <laughs> the problem is the connection between glass, which is uh, non-absorbent. You need to have really quality adhesive. Normally you can use two types, cementous adhesive, class S2, highly deformable, or using epoxy. What happens with mm -hmm. polymers? Polymers eat a mesh. Uh, normally mesh from a Chinese mosaic is not alcohol resistant. Polymer eats mesh and you start having problems that all the pieces are coming, coming uh, falling out. With this system uh, from a Spanish factory with Repur, you don't have problems like that. You have uh, the silic, the precision is much better. You know, and this is really important. You know, we only mm -hmm. want to build, let's say, perfect pools. With, with as you can, you saw in Instagram, uh, uh, we we need top-notch quality. You know, anything beside that is not good for for the business. Once you use a product that doesn't work, you and you know that you, can, you have the choice to use something that's good. Of course, you want to not mess with that other stuff, right? Definitely, definitely, but. Uh, you know, uh, through these, like, let's say, it's five or six years, we did a lot of technical presentation with installers to explain them benefits of the material, uh, how to use it, uh, uh, and training, 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 explaining to them. You know, I become boring to myself because I was, you know, for, for years I've been explaining uh, the same things. But, you know, over the years, it's like talking with child, you know, <laughs> you train it to do it, uh, train it good. So we honestly, we didn't have a single reclamation. I, I cannot really remember. We have installers. I don't know when I ask them, have any client call you that even one single piece has fallen off and 90% of them say, no, really, no, really. For, I think, seven, six or seven years and... We are the largest importers of glass mosaic in Europe, believe it or not. So we built, I don't know, we, I really, to be honest, I stopped counting, you know, a few years back uh, on how many <laughs> projects, pool projects for, I think, seven, six or seven years. And we are the largest importers of glass mosaic in Europe, believe it or not. So we built, I don't know, we, I really, to be honest, I stopped counting, you know, a few years back uh, on how many project, <laughs> pool projects for, I think, seven, six or seven years. And we are the largest importers of glass mosaic in Europe, believe it or not. So we built, I don't know, we, I really, to be honest, I stopped counting, you know, a few years back uh, on how many <laughs> project, pool projects for, I think, seven, six or seven years. And we are the largest importers of glass mosaic in Europe, believe it or not. So we built, I don't know, we, I really, to be honest, I stopped counting, you know, a few years back uh, on how many project, <laughs> pool projects. What is it that got you started in this industry? And tell us a little bit about what your role is in it. Uh, uh, I don't know, it's difficult to say, you know, uh, 
I've always had the affection towards construction industry. How it happens, my father is not in the construction industry. My mother, they are not, you know, they're completely different things. <laughs> but uh, I cannot say, you know, honestly, when it starts, you know, uh, I always thought I would be doing business, you know, economy or something like this. But uh, through the years, I find out that I really, tr I'm passionate about construction. I changed few companies, different roles from working in small company, private to retail chain, big production company. Then afterwards, I was uh, in big construction company. And for the last six years, seven years, I'm sorry, time, time uh, <laughs> really flies. Why? I'm a <laughs> yeah, honestly, I'm a general manager in this company. So mm -hmm. I'm satisfied, you know, I always wanted to do to be, let's say, private businessman. It's not uh, because, the, because of the, the money. It's because I want to have control over the situation. And because when you are the owner, you can choose the path how you want to grow your company. When you work for somebody else, it's always my way or the highway. So yeah. I, this is something I really enjoy. Uh, it's a really dynamic business. Uh, working with people, some say it's difficult, but I believe really if you are honest and you have a good technical knowledge, you can always achieve good success, definitely. So you, you right now are currently the general manager. Yeah. Correct? Tech. Right. Yes. And the name of your company, say the name of your company. I'm just Marcazia. curious. Marcazia. Uh, believe it or not, it doesn't have to do anything with, with the tiles. Uh, Marcazia, it means, uh, you know, a spot for uh, Alpine guys. When you go in the Alps, you see the red dot. So it doesn't have to do anything, uh, anything uh, with a mosaic. <laughs> As you can see, I don't know, uh, the, par the power of um, uh, social media is strong, but I'm not really involved as uh, I have a lot of work to do. So probably in some next period, probably I'll find someone who will do it for me. We don't have even a web page or anything because we are wholesale. You know, we are not a retail. Mm -hmm. So we work mostly with architects, uh, specialized uh, companies that are doing pools, uh, installers, large, let's say, hotels. So we are not strong in retail, to be honest. Gotcha. Okay. So like, for example, you were saying something earlier about installers and do you, so do you have like, um, like a lot of different installers that work for you contract wise that you the go to as far as like putting them together and the designers and the installers, you're managing yeah. all of that aspect? Yes. Uh, we technically don't have installers, let's say hired from our company. But we have, uh, let's mm -hmm. say, uh, installers that are buying materials from, from us. So we give recommendation to investors, you know, to recommend it. This is a good installer. Choose him. So mm -hmm. it's it's much better option. You know, it's difficult today to find the good installers. And everyone, it's not possible to give them a salary they really deserve. So most of them don't want to, to have like contract. They want to work pool by pool. I probably mm -hmm. in the states in the states is the same situation, but I really have to say that our, uh, that our installers are one of the best in the world by far. I, I even Italians, Spanish people say definitely. You know, uh, I think there are like artists. I called one, you know, Leonardo da Vinci because what he <laughs> does in the pool is unbelievable. You know, you cannot find even single mistake. That, that is not possible. For instance, in one pool of 80 square meters, you like, you will have like 200,000 pieces of mosaic and not even a single mm -hmm. mosaic. So you need to like that job to, to create something, something nice, definitely. Yes. And to have that, you know, steadfast patience to install every one, just like you said, 200,000 pieces, you know, that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot, definitely. <laughs> So you were saying like, uh, you know, you wanted to discuss a little bit about glass mosaic versus the large slabs and like just what your thoughts are on that. Uh, uh, 
let's start from the beginning. Uh, uh, the most, yeah. most important thing when planning a pool is the size of the pool. So first, advantage of glass. Any kind of pool you imagine, is it overflow, skimmer, is it uh, triangular, it's an oval pool, you can use glass mosaic. So other thing is uh, glass mosaic is totally non-absorbent. So it cannot mm -hmm. change color. It won't have any problems with it. There are only two valid systems. We can choose any factory producer in the world. Mapei, Caracol, Litocol, Sika, Laticre. They have only two systems for pools. That is a system mm -hmm. for glass mosaic. And that's a system for standard pool tile uh, with special pieces, overflow edge, uh, uh, special pieces for corners, uh, it's a size 12 by 24 in centimeters, of course. That is, and it's made from clinker. Those, we call it clinker tiles. They are also non, uh, non absorbent. So what is the situation? We have situation in Europe and practically in, in, in the world that architects uh, want to create uh, spaces without joints. Uh, joint mm. is, joint is, how can I say? It's not a matter of aesthetic. It's uh, something that's part of construction. So bigger, bigger tile, bigger joint. And I have mm -hmm. a lot of times a situation that people say, ah, I don't want to have a big joint. Listen, it's not part, it's big or small. It's, it's, a, it's a matter of physics. So larger tile means you need to have bigger joint. Mm -hmm. The other factor, which is really important, there is no system, valid system for ceramic tiles over size I've mentioned before, 30 by 60, 60 by 120 or slabs, I don't know, in, in the pool. The main issue is size of the joint. The other thing is what happens in pools. Uh, you can see it on the internet and in a lot, lot of forums, you have calcium residue that coming out from the joint. So what, what is the reason? For instance, if we use tile that is only 30 by 60, how, man, how much time does it need to adhesive to cure properly, full curing? Mm -hmm. Probably it takes, it, it takes two months. So in every technical data sheet of any producer, uh, produ producer of uh, material says grouting after 24, after 24 hours. Uh, sorry for saying it's bullshit. It's, <laughs> adhesive cannot cannot uh, cure in 24 hours it can cure if we are using rapid settling rapid setting adhesive even then mm -hmm. there there is a potential situation that it won't cure so the other thing is uh we need to use special adhesive for tiles and we recommend gel adhesives some will say ask why gel adhesive so comparing to traditional adhesives Gel has a lot of advantages. Uh, the structure is completely different. When you use notch travel, for instance, for classic adhesive, cementous adhesive, mm -hmm. of course, what happens? Uh, air uh, pockets come be be beneath the tiles because you cannot be 100% sure that full covering of the tile is possible. You can use vibrator or, or any, any help you need. There is always possibility that you will have something beneath the tile, it's not, it's not uh, fully covered, even with gel adhesive. Yeah. And what happens? In that part, definitely water comes, you have sun and problems that we have chemical reaction that, uh, that calcium goes all over the joint. It's, and you cannot clean it normally, you, you can only clean it by mechanical way. And when you use mechanical cleaning, definitely you have a problems that you will definitely make uh, problems with, with the glazure of, of the tiles. So on the other mm -hmm. fact, you cannot use any tile you buy in Home Depot, or I don't know what, what is the name of, of, of the <laughs> shop in, in America. That's For instance, a, because one of them, <laughs> one of them uh, you only can use uh, extruded porcelain. Extruded porcelain can be used in pools. Nothing else, not even a glaze, nothing because of, of the absorption. We are, when we're mm -hmm. talking about the pools, we have uh, pool chemistry, pH, uh, chlorine, 
etc. What happens? Uh, they are uh, normal tiles are not tested with the pool chemistry. Only glass is tested. So, mm. but I cannot say if something is more beautiful or not or not. Yeah, it, it's part you choose the color. The other thing is I truly believe that the best systems uh, and best pools created in the in the world is are made definitely from the glass. You know, even in ancient time uh, people are using for uh, saunas that they, they were using glass and you will never have problem with glass definitely we didn't have any but we had the problem with the tiles you know sometimes people are i don't know they're not cooperative they they are buying stuff they think what is beautiful my first opinion is always the functionality of, of, of the pool not the color you choose the color Someone likes a red color. I, we even built one red pool. Uh, it, Isn't that right? No, it didn't look good. It looked like a slaughterhouse. But investor says that he wants <laughs> something like something like that. Well, you know, and that, and, and, and from what I understand, you have so many color choices using glass, which is great because that way you can, you know, as you said, really appeal to people on the different colors it looks that they want. Uh, that is the, the, the main advantage, let's say, designing, a designer advantage of the glass mosaic, because now you have digital technology. Color range of mosaic is far more greater than using tiles. Sorry, tiles, you know, you have practically, they are using few colors, white, beige, gray, and that's it. But uh, uh, what uh, mosaic factor is created, uh, with, with every mosaic you choose, you have what kind of watercolor. And that is something that people don't understand. If you use mm. white, white mosaic, you will have a turkey's color of the pool. So it's, of course, it's a matter of light. So it's not like buying right. tiles for bathroom. It's a completely different story. When you put the water, it changes everything. True. That is so interesting. So, um, you were talking about like the adhesives and you were talking about the, you know, what types to use and what you've steered away from. So in your opinion, what are the kind of adhesives that work best? Uh, for glass, you mean for mosaic or, yes. or for the tiles? Mm -hmm. oh, for for uh, glass, as you were talking about. Yeah. I would recommend uh, all products from Litocol. Definitely Italian producer, uh, as their credo says, high performance building products. We, we work with Litocol exclusively for like six or seven years. And mm -hmm. they have two types you can use. Uh, Hyperflex K K100. It is a gel adhesive, S2, highly deformable adhesive. Or you can use uh, Litoelastic Kevo epoxy adhesive, water-based epoxy mm -hmm. adhesive. You can choose... Whatever you use, it's okay. It all depends if you, it depends on the surface. Uh, we, we built some pools on the boats when we, you have metal structure. So definitely in that situation, you need to use epoxy adhesive because of the, because metal is not absorbent material, definitely. So you need to, right. for, for a standard concrete pool, we use uh, Hyperflex S2 K100 and that's it. But um, one of the uh, problems that occurred in the past is are the problem with the epoxy, epoxy grout. And uh, this is one of the reasons why people start, let's say, leaning towards tiles is the problems they had with epoxy grout. Uh, mm -hmm. All producers of epoxy grout uh, create epoxy in similar way. So you have a base and pigment. And that is the problem. Pigment, uh, uh, when you mix mix uh, material with the pigment, every bucket mm -hmm. is different. So especially when you have situation where you're using dark colors, you have problems with discoloration. Funny thing is that in every technical data sheet of the producers of the material, they said, oh, listen, if you use darker color, if discoloration happens, that's not a reclamation. It's an aesthetical problem. Imagine you are doing some really expensive mosaic handmade from the gold. You yeah. know, we are talking about something that is worth tens of thousands of euros. And you have a situation like this. A little completely changed uh, 
formulas for their epoxy and they have a patented product. It's completely unique style like KOY because they do, the epoxy doesn't have pigment. It's color quartz, so it cannot change color. You can use mm. know, black, white, green, any color uh, you want, it will never change the color. And it's UV resistant, so it's really game changer in, in, in the grouting industry. That, that's high performance, all right. And I heard from, uh, from the guys who went to Chairside, did you go this year? Yeah, every year we go to Chersai. It's, it's like yeah. uh, tradition. Uh, Chersai is like covering uh, the biggest fair in ceramic industry. And everyone in the world of ceramic should really go to see the trends in the tiling industry, definitely. Mm -hmm. Italians, you may like it or not, but they are, for instance, I truly believe they are the best designers in the world. When you, when you see the cars, the fashion and everything, but in the tile industry, definitely, I would recommend Italian tiles. They have the best, the best products, definitely. Sorry, my Spanish you know, friends, but a, they are better. You know, it's an interesting legacy it, 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 that I think you're right. The Italians have as far as how far back their ancient design, um, you know, from food to, like you said, fashion, automobiles, um, even in this industry uh, for, you know, tile. And it's interesting that, from what I understand, Lita Cole actually kind of um, improved what was already high performance epoxy grout. Like it's already, it's been refashioned. They're going to rebrand it, come out with new, a new look and all of that. So it's going to be interesting to hear more about that. Yeah, uh, from uh, April next year, they are starting a uh, completely new, new story regarding materials and everything. I'm really excited <laughs> to see what the, what the new product range will be. And, you know, they didn't tell me exactly what, but uh, from what I heard, every material they have will be based on gel technology. Completely wow. new lines, new. I think uh, they will be completely different than their competitors, you know. Um, yeah, exactly. And you brought up such an interesting point, um, just to always remember, and that is what you were saying about the epoxy grout that they have, that uh, with the darker colors, the way it's created, the way it's manufactured is they don't have that tendency to discolor and then, yep. you know, ruin a perfectly good installation design, all of that, you know. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that is that was practically a huge problem in the past. You have, I know we're talking with installers. For instance, you were an investor. Uh, you don't need to know anything about the chemicals. Definitely, because you are pro you are buying some finished product. What happens mm -hmm. in the past? What happened in the past? Me, let's say I'm an installer, and we have reclamation. What happens? You are unsatisfied. Of course, if you are unsatisfied, you are not willing to pay his work. He needs to pay material one way. If it's good or bad, he needs to pay. And that, they were right. starting losing a lot, of, a lot of money. And when people start losing money, they tend to change. And that is the, let's say, it happened like four or five years ago when we started working with Little Call. Uh, we had a lot of installers. They were saying, listen, we have problems uh, with, with epoxy. Can you find a different product? And I was searching a lot. And to be honest, uh, I tested that material with my friend that works in the chemical, uh, that is a uh, dean of, ah. uh, of chemical, chemical college in, in Croatia. And uh, I give him uh, the sample of Starlak Eo and I asked him, listen, can you check it and say, what do you think about it? And he called me after a week and told me, listen, we need to produce this. We can learn a lot of money. Uh, <laughs> he, he told me that uh, it's a really ex excellent product and it cannot be compared with anything on the market. So I need wow. to start working with it. And <laughs> believe it or not, we, we didn't have a single reclamation with, with uh, Star Like Evo. And I'm 100% wow. sure we will never, we will never ha have problems with epoxy. It's not about, uh, let's say, believing material, but... Uh, it's, it's about when you are certain in some stuff, you need to promote it and explain to installer or investor what are, what are the benefits of, of some products. 
it's really completely a different product from, from the competitors. It's really easy to apply, easy to clean. So I would recommend it. So trends, the trends that are going on in the ceramic industry, what and the extra, extra large slabs, you know, and all of that. So tell us a little bit about what your thoughts are on all that. Uh, well, the trends are changing, definitely. The bigger, mm -hmm. the better. And more or, more or less every factory in Italy, in Spain, are creating slabs. What, what are the slabs? Practically large format tiles, 120 by 240, 120 by 280, 160 by 360. Those are really, really big, uh, big, big tiles. Uh, mm -hmm. they, are, they are made in different thickness. You have six millimeters and you have 3.5 millimeters that are uh, laminated from the back with epoxy resin. So uh, one of the reasons uh, Italians created uh, large format tiles is because uh, designers, they didn't like the joint. So mm -hmm. that is one of the reasons. You know, the, the designers like uh, to have continuous uh, surface. So less joint, they think it's better. Mm -hmm. So a lot of factories is producing. Uh, regarding design, it all depends on, on some markets. Uh, in Croatia, we like anything that goes with stone. Stone looks will always be sold. Uh, mm -hmm. in, let's say in Arabic countries, they like uh, onyx marble effect. Uh, wood in large slabs, nah, nobody wants it. It doesn't look good. So the trends are definitely leaning towards big tiles. And yeah. bigger tile, we have a situation we need to have skillful installers. Different approach, we need to have specialized machinery to cut, uh, you know, the tables. Uh, you need to have special adhesive. You cannot use any kind of adhesive buying in Home Depot that costs, I don't know, a few bucks. You need to buy really quality adhesive. For instance, in Croatia, we are, using, we are making facades from the large slabs. In that case, we there are a few few options. You can use systems from Hilti with the construction, or you can put it directly on the thermal insulation. But when you want to put it in thermal insulation, you need to have really, really quality adhesive. So, yeah, let, let, it's almost like brings on new things or new challenges or new considerations um, as far as like being able to adhere it and make sure that it doesn't you know, fail basically, right? When you're using the yeah. bigger slabs. I'm not a huge fan of the slabs. I don't know, maybe I'm, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a bit traditional. I like glass, uh, but uh, you need to go with the flow, let's say. If trends are to have a large format tiles, you need to go with it, you know. You need to satisfy the needs of your clients. That's the, that's right. the, the most important thing in any business. Even I have in my office, I have samples of the slabs. I can show you if you want to see. Sure. Yes, I need, uh, just Let's a second. See it. I need, well, maybe it's better like this. Yeah, there you, you go. Perfect. Yeah. 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 We like, uh, we like slabs also. My, I have, my friend is really good installer, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And he only installs slabs for like last wow. 20 years. Yeah. And he is a really good professional. To be so would you find like from his like point of view, because obviously they're not little, so does it speed up the project or because it's got a different kind of uh, dynamic, does it still take as much time to install a pool with the bigger slabs? I mean, does that help at all in the time? Ah, it's it difficult to say. It all depends on of, of installer. You have some mm -hmm. installers that are really quick. You have installers that are slow. But basically, it's completely different uh, preparation when you're doing slabs. Uh, yeah. I, I would always recommend slabs on the walls, never on the floor, because we have problems with, that, with adhesion at the surface. Well, the tile will crack. It. Not, it's not about uh, uh, the thickness of the tile. It's because there is not support underneath the tile. Mm. So, so maximum size for the floors, I would say, was would be one twenty by one twenty. 
I don't think you, you necessarily need a bigger tile for, for floor. For the walls, basically you can use any, any, any size you want. It all depends, I will always say, on, on the installer. You need to have yeah. perfect straight surface. You cannot put like three, four centimeters of adhesive because it loses its function. Are you saying designs come up that have like slabs combined with the smaller glass tile? Like is it a combination pool or are you seeing that much? Uh, I've seen a lot of different stuff. Uh, uh, Italians are kings of design. I've seen... Uh, mosaic combined with the slabs uh, smaller formats for instance i saw that let's say some smaller formats 20 by 20 you know that were used like 20 or 30 years ago they are they are let's say returning in fashion a uh, few years ago mm -hmm. you cannot sell a travertine stone to anyone uh, factory start wow. canceling production this year every factory has travertine stone it's trends. You're right. As we wrap up every interview, we like to ask everyone, like, well, how do you see upping your tile game? What does that mean to you? Uh, it's a completely new experience, to be honest. Uh, the thing is normal when you see what social medias are used for some, I, I don't know, to, to find some word for stupid things. There are yeah. very, very few, uh, let's say, uh, videos, instructionals uh, that are, you know, for professionals. And I see it huge potential because uh, there is no stupid, I always say there is no stupid questions. Mm -hmm. There are only questions that are not asked. And uh, technology is, uh, you know, changing, evolving, definitely. Experience that I had a few years ago and today is a completely different story. So uh, I believe that uh, with specialized you know podcasts like like yours uh we can reach uh to professionals to professionals and uh i think it's a future definitely oh, i love that because you know what we so want this to grow and just what you're saying makes so much sense because you know i'm finding there's just so much to learn so much to share and you guys already from what i understand worldwide have such a camaraderie in your industry, uh, you might do different aspects of it, but you know, there's just that camaraderie of working with this tile and yeah. everything that comes with it that you share in common, you know? Yeah, definitely. Uh, in every work you do, you need to be passionate about. Definitely. You need to oh, yeah. be, and you need, of course, there is always possibility you will make mistake. But uh, you only learn from your mistakes, definitely. Live and learn. I had, I had a few situations that I wasn't sure really to, to give a good technical idea. But the problem was I, nobody had. You know, we had a situation uh, when people come to me and say, listen, I need your help. When they say to me, I need help, I know it's a tricky situation as I really see myself as a true professional. I have a large experience mm -hmm. in the construction industry and I like to help people. We don't charge our advices. When we start charging our advices, probably, probably that's the sign we'll, we're going to quit this job. <laughs> I hear you, Definitely. yeah. It's a, it's a beauty of that sharing and uh, just wanting to pass on the knowledge. And I think it's great when somebody runs into something that maybe they didn't encounter before and they can go to, to someone who can help them and mentor them, you know, it's really great. But, uh, you know, in this work, uh, when people are egoistic, they don't want to share uh, their knowledge. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, I really think that sharing is really important, uh, exchanging ideas you know, mm -hmm. uh, from all over the world, not even in Croatia, because it's a different situation in England, in, in Germany, in America, in, I don't know, in China, it's a different situation, but we need to share our knowledge. For instance, we have some new lithical product, it's called uh, Lithoproof X3. It's a mm -hmm. uh, completely different kind of uh, waterproofing. There's, those are waterproofing sheets. And what happens, situation, uh, when we put adhesive underneath, we have some little trolley and we put the trolley, but what happens? 
when you apply too much pressure, the connection within adhesive and that waterproofing is not good. And ah. I went to the construction site and I said, hmm, maybe we are doing something wrong. And what is the situation? I talk with you and uh, Mr. Luca Romani from uh, research and development from uh, Litocol. I told him, listen, Luca, we, we are doing something wrong. We need to put less weight on the trolley and the connection will be much better. And afterwards, we didn't have that problem. That is a key mm. uh, advantage from Litocall because if you have situation, you, we can, you know, with three phone calls, we can see what is the problem. Is it problem with material? Never, we, we didn't have never problem with materials, but <laughs> it's always to ask, maybe we are doing something wrong. Yeah, it's, a, it's so much better when you've got um, somebody on the other side willing to listen and, and be willing to make changes or adjustments within their products. And it does sound like Lidacol is much more adaptable for that. Well, Zora, yeah. thank you so much for taking time out to talk to us about this. I can't wait to get your episode on.